Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And we don't thank each of you for joining with us for Thursday's Daily Bible Study, coming from Charlene's Outreach Ministry. We have a great lesson, <clears throat> as we have spoken previously. Uh, when we are in the Gospels, we have many lessons that give the outlook from the uh, different, the the one or both, uh, all through all four of the Gospels. So this. Uh, Lesson Pilot Amazed is coming from Mark 15, verses 1 through 15. And as we uh, look at this lesson, we want to notice the differences that uh, Mark brought about or the different times that is brought about uh, during his gospel than when, uh, when we read the other one. Amen. So we're going to get ready to move right into our lesson. But first, we want to ask if anything is said, touches your heart, soul, spirit, or uh, you have any questions or comments, please feel free to jot them at the bottom of the screen below, and I will get to them as soon as possible. Also, if you would, subscribe to my channel and join with us as we gather together to study and meditate on the Word of the Lord, that we may become more proficient in doing the Word, amen, instead of just hearing the Word, amen. We're going to move into our lesson, but first we're going to have prayer. <clears throat> Dear God in heaven, we thank you, Father. We thank you for all the many blessings that you bestow upon us. We thank you for being God. We thank you for who you are, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, we give you the glory, the honor, and the praise, Father. We thank you, Father, for making a way out of no way, leading and guiding us in your true path of righteousness. We thank you, Father, for all that you have done, you is doing, and you shall do. In the mighty name of Jesus, we give you the glory, the honor, and the praise, Father. Lord, we thank you for being with us as we go out and when we come in. We thank you for guiding our thoughts and our action and our mind in the mighty name of Jesus, for giving us a, a, a desire to do that which is good and right in your sight, Father. We ask that through your grace and mercy that, uh, uh, that we will stand up for the right and not the wrong, that we will not allow people to persuade us and push us into doing things that is not of you, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, and, and, and then have to ask for forgiveness and repent for things that we shouldn't have done, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, Father, that you be with us and stand by us. We thank you that you are all in all. We thank you, Father, that as we study your word and meditate on your word, Father, that we become stronger and more proficient in doing your word, Father, and not just hear us only, in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we come for you to you today seeking healing, deliverance, and protection and guidance over all those at the sound of my voice and whenever this is heard, Father, that they, uh, our mind, soul, spirit, and body is healed and whole in the mighty name of Jesus. As we go through your word, Father, we know that by your stripes we are healed and we claim and walk in that healing. As you said in the scriptures, Father, that if we say unto this mountain, be thou remembered, removed, it shall be removed, and have faith and not doubt. Lord, we thank you, Father, that through your grace and mercy, we know that we can do all things through you, Father. With your strength, Father, we can do all things through you, Father. We give you the glory, the honor, and the praise, Father. We ask you to go with us and stand by us in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you that our eyes is open and we see, our ears is open and we hear, and we have wisdom, knowledge, and understanding from on high. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Amen. As we stated our lesson, Pilate is amazed. Mark 15, verse 1 through 15. Amen. We're going to move right into our lesson. And the scripture lesson text read, verse 1, And straightway in the morning the chief priest held a, a consolation with the elders and scribes and whole council, and bound Jesus and carried him away and delivered him to Pilate. And Pilate asked him, Art thou the king of the Jews? And he answering said unto him, Thou sayest it. And the chief priest asked, accused him of many things, but he answered nothing. And Pilate asked him again, saying, Answers thou nothing? Behold how many things they witness against thee. 
But Jesus yet answered nothing, so that Pilate marveled. Now at that feast he released unto them one prisoner, whomsoever they desired. And there was one named Barabbas, which lay bound with them that had made insurrection with him, who had committed murder in the insurrection. And the multitude, crying aloud, began to desire him to do as he had ever done unto them. But Pilate answered them, saying, Will ye that I release unto you the king of the Jews? For he knew that the chief priest had delivered him for envy. But the chief priest moved the people that he should rather release Barabbas unto them. And Pilate answered and said again unto them, What will you then that I should, shall do unto him whom you call the king of the Jews? And they cried out again, Crucify him. Then Pilate said unto them, Why? What evil hath he done? And they cried out the more exceedingly, Crucify him. And so Pilate, willing to, willing to content the people, released Barabbas unto them and delivered Jesus when, when he had scourged him to be crucified. So even though he found no fault in him, Yet and still, he scourged him and released him unto the people. Jesus delivered to Pilate, and Pilate being amazed. Verse 1, And straightway in the morning the chief priest held a consolation with the elders and scribes and their whole council, and bound Jesus, and carried him away, and delivered him to Pilate. As we look at this verse, it describes a morning meeting of the Sanhedrin, perhaps co covered to validate the illegal action of the night before. As a result, Jesus was bound and taken to Pilate, the Roman governor of Palestine. So we are not sure whether it actually happened in the morning or at night because there are uh, Speech is different in what they use in wording, so it could be either or. So, <clears throat> and because I'm not a uh, Hebrew or Greek scholar, I do not know uh, really um, what the words are in this inferences. Verse 2 through 5 says, And Pilate asked him, Aren't thou the king of the Jews? And he answering said unto him, Thou sayest it. And the chief priests accused him of many things, but he answered nothing. And Pilate asked him again, saying, Answers thou nothing? Behold how many things they witness against thee. But Jesus yet answered nothing, so that Pilate marveled. As we are looking at this, <clears throat> we see up to now Jesus had been on trial before the religious leaders on a charge of blaspheming. Now he was taken before the civil court on a charge of treason, of treason, knowing, okay, no one was able to find him guilty of treason. They knew that blasphemy was only uh, in the religious sector, so they had to pull it in something that would make it look like he was doing something against the Roman uh, Empire. Amen. So now he was taken before the civil court on a charge of treason. The civil trial took place in three stages. First before Pilate, then before Herod, and finally before Pilate again. Pilate asked the Lord Jesus if he were the king of the Jews. If he were, he was presumably dedicated to the overthrow of Caesar and thus guilty of treason. The chief priest poured out 
a torrent of charges against Jesus, Pilate couldn't get over his poise in the face of such overwhelming accusation. He asked him why he didn't defend himself, but Jesus refused to answer his critics. Amen. And, and even we see here that uh, 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 Pilate, you know, asked him, you know, was he king of the Jews? And Jesus told him uh, he, he was king of the Jews. But uh, only the uh, religious leaders were saying that um, Jesus being king of the Jews made a difference as far as it went to, through the, to the Roman Empire. And uh, Pilate realized that it actually had nothing to do with the Roman Empire. He had not threatened the Roman Empire at all in any manner. Amen. Verses uh, 6 through 8 says, Now at that feast he released unto them one prisoner whomsoever they desired. And there was one named Barabbas which lay bound with them that uh, had made insurrection with him, who had committed murder in the insurrection, and the multitude crying aloud began to desire him to do as he had ever done unto them before. He, they wanted him to, you know, release somebody to us. You, you, you always release somebody to us at this time, so uh, we want the same thing done this time. We don't want to stop the tradition. I mean, it said it was the custom of the Roman governor to release one Jewish prisoner at this, at this feast time, sort of a political soap uh, to the unhappy people. One such illegible prisoner was Barabbas, guilty of rebellion and murder. When Pilate offered to release Jesus, taunting the envious chief priests, the people were primed to ask for Barabbas. The, the, the priest has said, no, we don't want uh, uh, Jesus. We want Barabbas released to him. And, and he began to say it loud and, and push the people to, to ask for Barabbas. So the very ones who were charging Jesus with treason against Caesar were asking the release of a man who was actually guilty of that crime. The position of the chief priest was irrational and ludicrous, but sin is like that. Basically, they were jealous of his popularity. They didn't want nobody to get their uh, props at the time. Amen. Uh, verse 9 through 15 says, but Pilate answered them saying, will you that I release unto you the king of the Jews? For he knew that the chief priest had delivered him for envy because he hadn't brought up anything that had been actually been said or done. He, 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 so he wanted to make sure that, that he, uh, he was aware that he knew that he was doing this out of envy. But the chief priest moved the people that he should rather release Barabbas unto them. And Pilate answered and said again unto them, what will you then uh, that I should do unto him whom you call the king of the Jews? Uh, uh, in, in this instance, I have thought uh, on several occasions that he was almost willing to release both of them, uh, uh, possibly, or change the release from Barabbas to, to Jesus. But they, the, the, the uh, priest and, and, and the Sanhedrin, they did not want Jesus released at all. And they cried out again, crucify him. Then Pilate said unto them, why, what evil has he done? And they cried out more exceedingly, crucify him. They couldn't say what evil he had done, but yet and still, we want you to kill him. Just kill him anyway. It doesn't matter if you've done anything or not. Amen. So Pilate willing to content the people, release Barabbas unto them, and deliver Jesus when he has scrunched him to be crucified. Why scrunch him uh, to be, uh, and he gonna be crucified, and you know he hadn't done anything. You just willing to do anything it takes to please the people. Let us not stand in that stead, I pray. Amen. Pilate asks, 
what he should do with the one whom they call king of the Jews. The people chanted savagely, crucify him. Pilate demanded a reason, but there was none given. Mob hysteria was rising. All they would shout was crucify him. And so the spineless Pilate did what they wanted. He released Barabbas, flogged Jesus, and delivered him over to the soldiers for crucifixion. He, it was a monstrous verdict of unrighteousness, and yet it was a parable of our redemption. The guiltless one delivered to die in order that the guilty might go free. We are set free. Because the innocent one was betrayed, was 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 hung, was was nailed to the cross. We were allowed to go free. What a powerful and wonderful lesson we have as we look at this lesson. Amen. I pray you meditate on this lesson and have a great and blessed day. God bless you.